I don't want to spend any more time in this, but I'm afraid I will. Hello everyone, my name is Guilherme and I'm working on my dream game using my own game engine and this is a game engine devlog. So we are finishing the game, but there is a secret piece of the puzzle that I haven't been solved yet and I'm actually working on that which is a better audio system. I mean, the existing audio system in the engine is fine. I'm using C Mixer to mix the audio, but it have some pro it has some some problems because the integration with the engine files, meaning the audio files that are present in the engine are not very good. Um, causing all sorts of problems including extra memory being util utilized and extra CPU being um, spend to decode the audio every time so this is bad and i also had some crashes and weird stuff so too long don't read i'm here writing the entire audio system now i'm using mini audio and not c mixer and i'm doing a much better integration but i'm terrible with audio i'm very bad at it i'm not good i don't understand the audio at all not only for when it comes to the technical aspect of it but also like I'm terrible listening to music in general or listening to people speak. So yeah, it's been a journey for me and I want this to end. <laughs> uh, I'm having some problems and I want to show the problems, but I also want to show uh, the improvements that I've made. Uh, the first one, which is a very obvious one, at least for me and our team, we, that because we are working in the engine daily, is actually that now we have much more information about each audio. For example, this audio. Great. Uh, we have the time of it, 59 seconds. The the format here is wrong, but the, the time is correct. You gotta trust me. Uh, now we have the sample rate, the number of channel. This is a stereo uh, audio, so you can see that we have the left and the right. We also have the waveform preview. This is all new in Cave. Uh, we do have the size in disk and the size decoded because we need to decode the audio in order to play it. Uh, so this is how it works, and we have this. So we can easily see if there's room for improvement or anything like that. Of course, there's an option to export this as an OGG and an option to replace this existing audio with something else. This is very handy if you want to like change something on the fly or go to Audacity and change an audio. Yeah, that's it. And improvements will keep going to this, which is fine and very good. So all the audios, audios here. Let me try to find a single channel. You can see this is a mono channel audio. Let's see. Yeah. It's a beep, um, and we do have the size and the size decoded. We do, we can see here that the engine only supports stereo, so this is duplicated. So, yep, not very good to have mono because it will be duplicated anyways. But you do have it. Uh, what about the problems, Guilherme? Yeah, what is the problems? Well, let me actually use the new search, new finder tab to search for an audio called DAF. This asset right here, okay? It's here. This is a very good audio but it looks terrible in the engine let me play can you spot the problem because if you say yes i can immediately spot the problem i want to talk to you because i want to know <laughs> i don't know why is this wrong i just know that it is wrong uh one thing is that the sample rate is incorrect uh, because the engine is currently using uh 41,000. 44,100, something like that, sample rates. So this is 48,000. So it is doing some math behind the scenes to resample this, but it turns out that this math is not exactly wrong because if I get, uh, for example, a cathedral sound that looks correct, and if I change the pitch, that is basically doing the same thing, at least for my engine, it will work. Not sure if it's working right now, let me try. So you can see, it is working. So this is the same thing that we do to change, the, to resample it. Um, I don't know why it's not working. If I save this as a file, let me export this, I will pause the video and export. Don't, and I'll, if I play this, you can see that it is looking correct. Let me show you. So this is how it is supposed to look like. Again, pay attention in this. And this is how it is actually l looking. Oh no. <laughs> That's bad, right? So 
So yeah, this is what I'm trying to fix and some other problems, but I actually, this is not everything. I want to show you a very cool new tab that I added called Audio Monitor. And I'm very happy about this one. I've just added here. Let me re-add so you can see and not get lost. You can see here. Um, I can, you can see again, engine separate is 44,100. Uh, I can monitor the audio and see all the audios being played and also all the audio tracks in the project itself, which is again, very handy. If I monitor the audio, you can see, hey, I wanna uh, record the past two seconds of playing audio. So you can see there's nothing going on in the, in the left channel and nothing going on in the right channel. And this is actually the engine mixer, meaning that this is the output, like everything, that, every sound that the engine produces will go here, including the preview. So if I play the preview, let me hit play. You can see here, it appears. And, that, and here you can also see the current sound being played. Let me go ahead again. Let me pause all the sounds so nothing happens. And then I can expand this. And this is very good because for every single audio being played in the engine, you can see the source, how many loops it got. If it's zero, it will stop. Um, if it is paused, in this case it is. Volume, volume left and right to make stereo stuff. Uh, pitch. And you also have 3D sound here as a part with some default stuff because this audio is not 3D, it's just a preview. So yeah, nice. We have this. And it is wrong, as you can see. Let me try to save 16 seconds so we can have a better look. It will use one megabytes of memory to cache this stuff, but well, it is what it is. Let's go ahead and play. And hopefully this will mimic this. I don't know. Don't know if it does. <laughs> I'm not really no uh, sure. By the way, you can see that the, the the wave is not very uniform. This is because I'm actually uh, this this uh, graph right here is a down sample for like just for visual representation of the actual waveform that is sent to the uh, audio device. So it's not perfect, and the down sample is very like poor. I'm just um iterating over like hey i want to have a thousand samples so so let's define that the first sample is the first one and the, the last one is the last one again in, in this and then everything in between is poorly interpolated just a preview but yes you can see here that the audio looks bad and i'm not entirely sure why and this is frustrating me quite a bit to be really honest because Again, I'm not good at audio. <laughs> I'm not. Not. I just know that it is bad. So it is a bit frustrating. Yes. But yeah, it is what it is. Let me actually try to play the game. Because I, I don't know how to fix this. I'm still, still figuring it out. This is actually a video uh, slash, hey, if you know what's going on, please tell me because I don't know. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, it might be good a good idea to show you the code since I'm saying I don't know if you know, please tell me. So it is kind of simple, my code. I just get like this rate, which is basically the pitch. This is the pitch uh, times. And then I do some correction here for the audio sample rate divided by the target, which is the device sample rate uh, to get like the exact amount of gain or subtraction that I need to do to the pitch. And I multiply them um to get a rate and this rate is how much i advance in the audio sample array um to get like the new sample not sure if this is correct or, or wrong i've i've been reading a lot to figure out this and also this is how c mixer does and c mixer works so we i do not have this problem with c mixer so i'm assuming that this, that this is correct but i don't know i may be wrong not sure. Um, then I go to all the requested samples. This is like a number that it's fed uh, to this function by the, the device itself, not me. And they say, hey, give me this amount of samples. And then I need to provide them the, one, the amount of samples. So I have the handle here. I'm, by, by the way, I'm actually iterated over all the handles, all the audios being played. And I'm, a, I'm actually increasing, incrementing this by this rate. Um, and then I was trying this to be like an integer because it makes sense to be an integer or a size T and the same for the rate. The thing is, if the pitch is less than zero, which is, it is a lot of times, and, and then also this correction is less than zero, per, sorry, less than one, not zero, of course, less than one, the rate will be less than one. 
So when I add this to an integer, it will be um, not exactly rounded, but if you know programming, you know, it will add zero. So the cursor will never go up, it will never move forward, meaning that the audio will be pretty much stopped. So this is not good. What do you want if this rate is less than one is to slowly but surely move forward. So yes, this is why I made this a double. It was a float. No, no good, then it's a double. And what I do after that is basically get a floor of this to, to, to sample. This is the cursor pose, the position. Then I do some magic here. For example, there's no loop, so this audio should not uh, keep adding to this. So I just break this sample and move, move to the next one. And then I do this math here just to make sure it loops. So this is the sample count, the, amount, the total amount of samples that the handle have. I actually previously Fetch this information right here, audio samples. Um, so I'm just taking the mod. Just make sure that this crystal position is always valid, right? Um, then I do some math for the volume, left and right, times the volume, 3D sounds and, and all that. And last but not least, let me see what I'm doing here. I just take the value. As I'm, as you can see, very simple that this create math here and just getting the value, the, the, the closest point possible here to this cursor position in the samples. And then um, if I have enough positions to spare, I do a, a linear blend between the, this, this sample and the next one just to accommodate the fact that this is discrete. It's not um, an integer, so I need to do this simple blending. I'm doing this. And then in the end, I'm adding all this to, to the buffer, to the output buffer, which is the, the mix buffer. So you can see here, I'm also clamping this, make sure that it does not overflow or do anything stupid. Ah, this is actually stupid. This clamp will not do anything because it will overflow. And this is wrong, by the way. Hmm. Hmm. Anyways, um, maybe I don't need a clamp at all. Because it will overflow if I add this before. I don't know. Anyways, let me know what's wrong. If you, if you spot something that is wrong. I've tried so many th different things. Uh, oh, I'm clamping. Uh, anyways, let's try this. Uh, but that's it. Uh, this is not the end of the video. There's something very important I want to show you, which is playing the game and see everything uh, here, which is nice. I would just disable the pause tracks because the engine does an optimization to pause a lot of tracks that are very far away. For example, you can see here there's a sound right here. Oops, if I can zoom in. Yep. Uh, there's a sound here and probably some other sounds. They're very distant, so the engine will pause that and it will be fill it with a bunch of pulsed audios, so that's why I have this. And if I play the game, check this out, it's so nice. You can see the magic going on here in the side. You can see everything that is currently being played, which is very nice. Let me actually try to give a better look. I'm enable some skills, and this is the game. Very nice, right? Let me try to kill this dude. Oh no! This guy will kill me. No, because I'm invisible. You can see. Oh no. My ears! My ears! <laughs> Very bad, right? My ears are crying right now because of that. But anyways. That's it, folks. Um, this is what I've been working on. It's very hard, very, very hard, but I'm getting there. I'm happy with this. There's no crash, which is amazing. Like at the moment, don't have a crash. Can you imagine like we don't have a crash doing this? Great, right? How, how cool is that? Everything is memory, like properly handled and uh, corrected and checked. And this goes like the audio system is in another thread because media audio does that. Um, and it is very well boundary checked. So there's no concurrency or anything like that. No problems when it comes to that, uh, this part of the implementation, but the mixing is wrong. And I don't know why. <laughs> Not sure why. Actually, let me actually compile this with all this because I believe there that, that may have something to do with this creatization. I'm not sure. By the way, this lurping, this is what it is doing. Very regular lurping, lurping, right? Yep. Anyways, uh, let me actually pause the video and try to compile that. I don't know. Let's see.
One second. And all right, it's back. For you, it was a second. For me, it was a bit more than that. But this is a great way to end the video. Let's see if we fix this or not. This video may be either disappointing or very exciting in the end. <laughs> Who knows? Let me actually dock the audio monitor here and monitor this. I'll actually start by something that I know that works, which is the cathedral uh, sound. Because if this is broken, everything is broken. Let's see. It's a great start, it is working. So let's jump to the deaf sounds, which is the one that is not working. Yep, as I suspected, not a difference. Anyways, folks, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoy it and I see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>